song, I sing this song, let's proclaim this. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain.
Jesus, we come before you today, Lord, bring us back to the simplicity of faith, of just speaking and trusting in your name, in your name alone, Lord, that if at the sound of your name demons tremble, and if every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that you are Lord Jesus, would you move us into alignment with that truth? As we declare your worship, as we declare your praise today, what our spirits and our hearts and our minds, Lord, tremble and be in awe and be moved by the wonderful and beautiful name, Jesus Christ. So I just invite you, lift your hands right where you are and say, Lord, I just want to be moved by your name again. Break every stronghold, shine through the 
just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus In this time, we're going to transition into offering. Christ gave of himself fully. And there's no way we could repay him for what he's done. But with all that he's entrusted us with, our time, our resources, whatever he's given to us, our own breath, we give it back in worship. We give it back as an offering of thanks. So come and give as you feel led today. It's all because of your cross, Jesus.
Welcome to ECHO. We're so glad you're here. My name is Caroline. I'm the missions director. And as you guys watched in the video, um, Kiki, the director of the KLDP, and the students are so excited to have us back. So I'm going to give a little background information about the Karin people, for some of you guys that don't know. The Karin people are hillside tribal people that live 
in the outskirts of Thailand. So originally from Myanmar, they are isolated and not welcomed in the mainstream Thai culture. So that's why um, they started the KLDP to equip the students to provide equal opportunities for them to assimilate in the mainstream Thai, Thailand culture. So they provide a holistic discipleship approach. As you heard, they live together, they eat together, they grow together and learn together. So we get a chance to meet them again. So Echo, I want to invite you to participate with the KLDP, with God, what God's doing in and through them. They're doing amazing work and we get a chance to host a weekend camp with them. So what does that look like? I know some of you guys are like, what, what do I have to bring? Just an open and willing heart. We will provide the training, the resources you need, and we will host a beautiful camp for them. We're really going there to offer our presence and our time and relational encouragement. So we are all called to be an extension of God's love in our Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So I really urge you guys, if you're interested, even if you want information, come talk to me after service. Um, I'll be there for prep dinner. Um, you can also email me at caroline.pay at echochurch.com. So I really hope that you guys um, really take that step of faith and reach out. So um, yeah, we'll be there. Oh, this is the last week to sign up, I should mention. Um, we've been host, um, announcing this for a month, so it's the last week. So really, if you guys want to talk to me, I'll be here. And lastly, we have a missions podcast that went out this week. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to hear it, but if you want to hear um, and listen about what our stance is in Echo Missions and what how we express missions at Echo, please take a listen. It's on the Echo app. All right, so I'm going to invite Eunice for the next announcement. Hi, Echo Church. I am Eunice Kim. I'm over there on the other side with all the kiddos every Sunday with the blue vests and the teachers that serve them. Um, and I have a, an announcement. We have Vacation Bible School coming up. Yeah, in June. Um, you may have heard the saved a date for June 13th, 14th, 15th here at church. Last year, we did our first standalone Echo VBS here, and it was amazing. <laughs> the kids kept asking me, when is the next one? What's our next theme? Um, I would love for you to experience it. If you yourself have never experienced it as a child, or if you have, and you want to see that in our children, that 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 light rising up, the brightness in their eyes. Oh my goodness, it's amazing to see them transform in one session um, and they just come to life. Um, this year, our, our theme is Camp Firelight. It's a summer camp adventure with God. So it's gonna look like a summer camp here out in the wilderness here and you, we need adults to become camp counselors. Yeah, can you show up for them? Yeah, um, we need part-timers, full-timers. Um, if you can't make it on June 13th through the 15th, we need people beforehand as well. There's a QR code there, please. Everyone take out your phones, turn on your cameras. I, I know some of you have signed up, so thank you for that. Please, um, it says April 21st is the last day for volunteers, but actually I'm gonna extend it to today because we would love for you to witness God moving in our kids, transforming their lives. It's going to be amazing. Um, in addition, for children's uh, registration, it is open for members' children right now. And on May 12th, it's going to open up to the public and friends of Echo Kids. So any child, maybe you have friends who are unchurched, they are welcome to sign up for our VBS on May 12th, but we need enough adult volunteers to host them. We would love for, to uh, open up the invitation to children outside of ECHO as well so they can hear the gospel message. This year, we're going to take it one step further by not only teaching Bible stories, but connecting it to a local missional outlet. Last year, our church had a koinonia, the... Um, Skid Row Outreach, where we prepared hygiene kits, and some of our families went too with our young children. This year, our Echo Kids will prepare hygiene kits. All of them will have their hands on these kits and prayerfully prepare them for Christmas in July. Socks for Souls will be happening in mid, uh, end of July, and as a church, we're going to partake in it. Um, so adults, families are welcome to do it. In June, at VBS, the kids will prepare a bunch of these kits as an extension, a, a call to action of sharing the good news locally. 
So um, I would love for you to participate. My email address is eunice.kim at echochurch.com. I'll also be at prep dinner, so I'll stay in my blue vest so you can spot me. All right, I hope to talk to you soon and see your names in our signups. Thank you. Give it up for Eunice and Caroline. And if you ever see people wearing blue, they're volunteering for youth, so you'd give them like a extra prop, a little, a little extra love. Okay, so um, I want to invite you all to prep dinner tonight. And if you already signed up for prep dinner because you remember you've been coming out to church regularly, then you know you sign up and you get to go. But if you didn't sign up, you don't get to go. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because food prep. But if you're brand new, if you're a newcomer, you came in the last couple of weeks, we do invite you to come. So don't be confused by this. You know what I'm saying, right? If you've been around and you know what prep dinner is and you didn't sign up, we're going to totally miss you. But we hope you'll sign up next month. <laughs> if you are new, don't know what prep dinner is, you hear it for the first time or vaguely in your memory, please come out. And uh, those who got their tickets will eat with you and get to know you a little more. So we welcome you all. And it's just a chance for us to gather as a family and eat meals, a meal together prepared, for, prefer, prepared lovingly by members of our house. All right. Lastly... Uh, as Pastor Joan gets ready to come up to preach, I'm going to ask you guys to pass the peace. And like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but like blessing someone with the peace of Christ is no small thing. We're not only asking God uh, to, to bless people with the Prince of Peace, right? The, the reconciliatory power and peace of God, but we're also inviting ourselves to be agents of peacemaking, right? So it's a big charge. So I ask, when you go around and say, peace of Christ be with you? You can say also with you, and if you don't know their name, just say your name. Or just say your name, because you might not remember the name. Okay? So go ahead and turn around and say, Peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Okay? worship Jesus together. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of God and just giving us an opportunity to really center ourselves and look to Jesus in the face together as a body. Uh, my name is Joanne Moon. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's my a joy, a weighty joy to deliver the word of God to you today. Um, Last week we had members meetings, so I know that I was hosting last week and I said, members, please stay, and then those of you who are not members, see you next week, and that next week has come, okay? So if you have held Isabella, Pastor Brian and Michelle's kid, as a child, then, and you didn't sign up for prep ministry, then yeah, you don't qualify, but... Um, if you don't know who Isabella is, then yes, you can come. Come join us for dinner, okay? And you will meet her there. She's a tallish um, person that's been at our church uh, from its genesis. And so, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to uh, spending time with you guys. It's always a lot of love um, and time that I spend in preparing prep ministry and all the other things that are happening in and through our church. So I'm just so privileged to be a part of it. And this is my offering. So um, join me in prayer as we get into the word today. Holy and loving God, Jesus, our Savior and Lord, we thank you. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for the costly sacrifice by which we could be set free to worship you and live in communion with you and so bless the world. 
It's no casual thing to be called a people of God. It's no casual thing to be in connection with you, the living God. And we're so privileged. I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our hearts and open our ears, open up our lives, the parts that we wanted to keep hidden or protected. God, open us up to your word so that it may cleanse us, correct us, direct us. Your word is life. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you speak today into hearts of all who are hungry for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm gonna go right into it. Today's passage comes from Gospel of John, chapter two, verses 13 to 22. This is from the ESV version. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who are selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remember that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus asked them, destroy the temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remember that he has said this and they believe the scripture and the word that Jesus has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so let's get into the text. There's a few things that I want us to kind of camp out on today. And the first thing is to talk about Passover. And I know many of you guys grew up in the church, but some of you didn't. Or maybe it's just been a long time since we flipped through the Old Testament. So do you guys know what Passover is? It's like, I've heard of it before and I kind of know what it is. And some of you guys are like, of course, such a... Passover is a Jewish festival to remember God's angel passing over the homes of the Israelites and essentially saving them on account of what? because of the smeared blood of a lamb over their doorpost. Do you guys recall the story? Sound familiar? A lamb's blood smeared on the door as the angel of the Lord passed over, you lived. But no blood on the door, what happened? The Egyptians, they didn't, so the angel of the Lord came and all the firstborns died that night, their children and their livestock. Nobody was spared. So Passover is a time to remember what God did for the Israelites. In Exodus 8.1, God tells us, um, I mean, yeah, well, let me get back to that. He li- so Passover is a time to remember what God did for the Israelites, yes? And then let me say this. He liberated them from the oppression of slavery and saved them for what? Save them for what? And in Exodus 8.1, now we're there, God tells us, so that they may worship me. Why did God liberate this people? So that they may worship him. They were set free to worship God. So in remembrance of this very significant and identity-forming moment, the Jews celebrate the Passover every year. And in today's passage, people are gathering to celebrate the Passover. And as that's happening, Christ, the Passover lamb, is here. The people don't know it yet, but Jesus knows, and you and I, we know that he is the son of God and the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John 1, 29. By his blood, all will be set free from the deathly grip of sin. We sing this today. By his finished work on the cross, we have a way to the Father and we will live in his presence forevermore. 
So let's also talk about the temple. What is the temple? Now, I remember when I went to seminary, it was out in New Jersey, and it was the first time I had to choose a church for myself, by myself. So I would go out to the main street near our campus, and there would be literally a church on every block of the street. There's Presbyterian, there's like Methodist church, there's this Episcopal church, there's even Friends church. You name it, it was there for the picking. And thank God for faithful traditions and expressions of worship, right? But the temple that we're talking about today was not like just any church on the street corner. The temple was the beating heart of Jewish faith. It was a one and only. Jews travel from all over the world into Jerusalem to worship God in the temple. Temple was where his presence dwelled. Now, some of us, if you've been at church for a long time, you may have grown up in, you know, come just as you are of the 90s and 2000s Western Christianity, you know, wearing flip-flops, Hawaiian shirts, maybe like chewing gum in worship. I think Western culture tells us to self-express, you know, through our fashion. This shows me that I'm like a, a andro- I'm going for like an androgynous look, or I don't know, I like a monochromatic look. And that tells, that expresses that I am, I don't know, X, Y, Z, right? It, I mean, I think our culture tells us we could self-express through the kind of work we choose. Maybe the kind of political buzzwords we use in our conversations. Maybe our very personal histories that we decide to share with other people. And whatever it is we're feeling in this moment, we want to be authentic, don't we? So we come as we are, meaning come wearing our self-imposed identities because that's what we're taught to value in our culture and this generation. But for the Jews of today's passage, it was not like that. These people dare not come into the temple of God as they wish. There was a specific way to show up in the house of God. For them, they were required. We don't really use that word on each other anymore, but they were required to bring sacrificial animals for their sins. And coming to God on his terms was not an easy thing for them. Because why? I could think of a couple things. First, it involved travel. How many of you guys love to travel? You're like, I'm like wanderlust, like I want to go. And I am, you guys may already know this about me, if if you know me, like I'm not, I'm like, I have a lazy boy, like worn out from my grandfather's house that I acquired after he passed away. And like, I just pool there. I'm like one with a chair. Um, So travel is not an easy thing for me. But I know that many of us, we love it. We celebrate it. We save all our monies and spend it on it. Well, for them, it involved travel, but it was not that kind of travel. And it didn't matter if you already lived in Jerusalem or lived, you know, many towns away. God's presence was where? In the temple. So they had to make the trip. And not only did they have to travel, they had to travel with animals, you know? especially animals set apart to be sacrificed unto God. So no matter how carefully you prepared this whole journey, it was very probable, almost a guarantee, that the animals that started out pure and unblemished at the beginning of the journey would become dirty, would get sick, or damaged as they travel to Jerusalem. It was virtually impossible to come into God's presence the way God's holiness demanded of his people. So thank God that now we come into God's presence by the blood of Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Amen? Oh man, we travel light because of his costly, costly sacrifice. Now, in Deuteronomy 14, it talks about tithing, and there's biblical provisions that are made for people who travel the distance to bring their tithes unto God. If you look at, uh, it's not on the screen, but I'll read it for us. It's from verse 24 to 25. It says, 
And if the way is too long for you, so that you are not able to carry the tithe when the Lord your God blesses you, because the place is too far from you, which the Lord your God chooses to set his name there, then you shall turn it into money and bind up the money in your hands and go to the place that the Lord your God chooses and spend the money for whatever you desire, oxen or sheep or wine or strong drinks, whatever your appetite craves. And you shall eat there before the Lord your God and rejoice, you and your household. It says this in Deuteronomy. So you can see how as you step into the temple of today's passage, the business of selling animals is a legitimate stand-in solution. It was a support and a service in place for people to show up to God. It addressed the inconvenience that people will be facing as they come into the house of God. And you and I know convenience sells. So when Jesus entered into the temple that day, he found a commercial enterprise in full swing a huge production of people selling cattle and sheep and doves and others with booths set up for exchanging money. Jesus saw that the temple courts had become a significant place of business transaction. Well, didn't we just hear? Wasn't this here to help people access the presence of God in the temple? Why then did Jesus have to bust out the whip? which leads me to the whip. Oh my goodness, what about that whip? I know that the image of Jesus swinging a whip can rouse uncomfortable feelings for some people. So I wanna address that nobody was hurt by what Jesus did. We know this because his critics, the Jews that were in the temple, in verse 18, don't charge him with anything that suggests that Jesus damaged property or physically hurt people and the animals. If Jesus had hurt someone or damaged something, even a little bit, his critics would have brought it up in their accusations 1,000%. They are always looking to trap him and cause trouble for him. But the charge was not that. The charge was on what authority would Jesus dare to disrupt the worship of the temple, the business as usual. So when I was studying instead, what some scholars do suggest is that it was probably not possible for someone, one person, to drive out large number of, ca- number of cattle out of the temple. You know, like, get out of here, right? without the use of something like a whip to guide and to direct. So it's the whip having less to do with impulsive and uncontrollable anger and more to serve a function of physically removing the animals and cleansing the temple. But even still, Jesus did pour out the coins of the money changers, like slow motion, I don't know. Like, and he flipped the tables, right? There was holy and passionate anger there. There was a fire in his belly, a visceral, no, this must stop right now. And we have to pay attention to that. Jesus saw something that nobody else did. No one else seemed to be raising a fuss or suspicion about the day-to-day activity in the temple. No one else was harassing the pigeon sellers or money changers. To everyone, this is just another normal day of decades of temple practice. And everyone seemed to have accepted its form. From the looks of it, the temple was bustling with people from all over, and they probably thought it was a good thing. Everyone, apparently, except Jesus. What did Jesus see in the temple that day? Jesus' words to take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade, speaks to the loss of the essence of the temple of God. Many things start pure, but few things end pure. Jesus' sharp rebuke begs the question of the heart 
of worship. What is true worship that Jesus was looking for in the temple? Jesus was zealous to recover the presence of God at the center of the temple. The animal selling and money changing was there to help people connect to God, to come into his presence. But if they have devolved and somehow taken on a life and meaning of their own, to minister to human needs, human comfort, and profits and margins and growth, more than leading us rightly and straight away into God's presence, we missed it. We're missing why we have come into the house of God. It's about his presence. Every detail of worship, whether it be music, media, parking, preaching, children's ministry, youth ministry, missional efforts, local and overseas, all of it must be about God's presence. All of it so that people can experience the fullness of his presence. Everything we do must be about God's presence. He is our living water. His presence is our life. But broken cisterns are made. They're dug when we prioritize ministering to ourselves over ministering to the heart of God. Recent studies are discouraging church leaders from singing to God for more than 21 minutes because data shows that people disengage after that. As a leader, as leaders, we are pressed and pressured to lead by human strategies over seeking God's vision, seeking God's desires, seeking God's wisdom in this hour. As people who gather to worship, the lure of consumerist mentality, maybe it's not deeply in you, but it's all around us. Our high taste in music. Some of you guys, I want your Spotify list because you guys have good taste in music. And you guys have good sense of design. It's just in you now. Everyone is a designer, so artistic. You know, and our, our desire for efficient flow of service and operations, the perfect mix of theologically sound and entertaining sermons, which I'm failing, but we have other pastors who really fulfill that. You know, Jungle Gyms, which we just set up recently. Yay for kids. The Craft Coffee, which is available for those of you who are in ops and serving that day. Plenty of parking space, right? Are these things bad? No, they are desirable things. They may even help us. They do help us a lot of times as we come into the house of God. But with all the good things going on and wanting still, we have to be clear God's house is about God's presence. It's about his pleasures. It's about his heart. We may be tempted to believe that our best thoughts are God's thoughts. We may be tempted to measure success by something other than God's presence resting with us. But when God's presence is not the main point, good things can start to get wonky and then out of proportions. Jesus is passionate about God's house being about God's presence. If our whole and collective aim at this hour is not the presence of God resting on us, we need to turn around. We need to get back on the pathway of return to him. And what is our pathway back? How do we return to the presence of God as our main thing, as our one thing? Our pathway to God's presence is to make it our aim, make it our aim to minister to the heart of God, to touch and move the heart of God in all we say and do. A measure of a good Sunday in the house of God is not 
was it good for me? I know most of us wouldn't say that out loud, but you know, we kind of, we check as we're driving off. Did it go as I thought it should? But the real question is, did I minister to the heart of God? Did I touch his heart? Did he enjoy my state presence, focused on him in everything that I didn't say? During Wednesday prayer meetings that's been going on uh, in the season, uh, as we're syncing up with Broken Sister series, we've been practicing the art of waiting on God. There's a way in which God communicates and touches those who wait on him. Did you guys know that? It's not a theory, but in real physical space and time. Waiting kind of feels like dying to ourselves sometimes. It's not tending to our own comforts. It's not getting busy and working things out for ourselves. It's to put my focus and affection on God, and then hold, not hurry, but wait until his presence falls on us. God is not static, and this is not in theory. We confess a resurrected Christ, amen, and Holy Spirit who has been sent to us out of this real and ongoing relationship with the living God, we draw life. We receive refreshment. We receive faith. We receive comfort. We receive healing, new strength, new joy, and peace beyond our current understanding of things. It's God's presence that empowers us to obey his commands, to humbly serve others, to boldly preach the gospel and participate, participate, participate in the renewal of all things until he returns. Without God's presence, we run the danger of becoming machines. That's what I was trying to do. We get dry, we get depleted, we get bitter, and we get burnt out. All in the name of Jesus. Well, we've been invited, you guys. We've been invited to a living and active, back and forth relationship, God of the universe. Jesus so passionately loved us that he laid down his life for us. Now we can live in his presence, and that means we can truly, truly live. So right now, we got to get personal, okay? Because not only do we come into the house of God to worship, but now God said we are the temple of God, and God's Holy Spirit indwells us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Jesus paid the price and has become our sacrificial lamb of God. It's by his blood that we can now enter into God's presence. Praise the Lord. And Holy Spirit lives in us from the moment we gave our lives to Jesus. We don't have to travel heavy. But only come with our hearts ready. So I want us to take a moment right now, okay? Just a couple minutes. Let's acknowledge Holy Spirit who lives in us right now. I don't think music's been prepared, so there will be no music. Let's acknowledge Holy Spirit who lives in us right now. You can close your eyes. You can stare right at me. All of those things are permissible. 
Holy Spirit, open our eyes. We set our intention on you. Now let's take a walk around the temple of your own heart. And we're going to ask, I have the question on the screen if you need to refer to it. We're going to ask these questions. What good things, you know, permissible things, even helpful things, would Jesus overturn in my life? Also, what has become rote and heartless in my life? Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to walk with us in the internal temple of our hearts just for a few minutes. And as Holy Spirit convicts or shows you things, clear out all the things that grieve his heart. Tell the Lord, oh, I see that, Lord. I'll take it out. I see that, Lord. Ooh, help me take that out. Just another minute. Amen. So come back here with me, if you're able. When we take inventory and confess the state of our inner temple to God, I hope you do more of this at home if you're not already. You will begin to feel the pleasure of the Lord break out over you. That's his presence that comes when you move his heart. It feels like peace. It feels like joy, it feels like hope, it feels clean, like holiness. God has feelings too, and you can please him. You can touch his heart in all that you do. God lives in you. Let him lead you to a deeper journey of wholehearted consecration unto the Lord. This personal cleansing work is a first and the most important step to see God's presence come and rest in greater measure here at Echo. I really believe that what Jesus is saying to Echo in this hour is that his house, his father's house, is about his presence to be the house where people experience a fuller measure of his presence. No other activity is to overshadow, disrupt, or hinder people from communing with the living God. Okay, so echo is about God's presence. How does that reality inform how we show up in the house of God? We can come desiring to move his heart with ours. I think sometimes we want to move his heart with somebody else's heart. You know what I mean? We're like, if they would only just, if they could just. But we have to mind our own heart. It's our hearts he desires. God looks at the heart beneath all the good things we plan and do. So when our sole focus is on how my own heart can please his, when God's pleasure becomes our one thing, and we do that by responding to Holy Spirit with immediate obedience and faith, then it will begin to impact the community around us for good. 
This is where it begins because how we show up will impact the way people access God's presence through us. If we don't show up, if we only show up half-hearted, if we don't come prepared to give our best, if we don't practice what we preach, it will impact the way people experience God's presence in this community. Personally, I've been impacted by Recess and the Buddies team and have experienced God's presence, his smile over my family and our church through them. Walking with our kids week in and week out means that there's got to be an aspect of preferring the other over ourselves that is so central to how we follow Jesus and live out the gospel. But then the recess team, the buddies team, they won't stop. And more of you are joining in this ongoing ministry. Your support, your time, the way you take up space with what you've got, everything you've got has connected our children and our families to the welcoming presence of God. You know, everything we do is unto the Lord. Or it will warp out of shape and interfere with God's presence touching his people. Our production, our comfort, our preferences, our standards are merely broken cisterns that will not give us the living water of God's presence our spirits are thirsting for. In ministering to ourselves, we will not find the living water. But in ministering to the heart of God, making worship and life about God's pleasures, we will posture ourselves for God's presence to come and now dwell, live with us. It's God's presence we're after. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 It says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We must not lose sight of how God loves, God loves to rest upon an imperfect people with contrite and broken spirits a hungry people whose hearts are burning for God's presence to come. We meet together asking and trusting that God's presence will rest with us. And as I was meditating on the word this week, the song dropped into my spirit. So it's time to sing, y'all. Join me, okay? old, because I'm old, okay? Let's sing it. Lord, we have come to this house where we long to sing your praises and we lift our hearts and our hands to the King of all the ages. Hear us, Lord, we pray. Come, Jesus, come. Come fill this place. Let's sing that again. Hear us, Lord, we pray. Come, Jesus, come. Come fill this place. One more time. Hear us, Lord, we pray. Come, Jesus, come. Come fill this place. Meet us here. Meet us here. Meet us here, Lord. We are few, but we are strong when you surround. As we gather in your name, 
Meet us here. So in closing, place for his presence my prayer is that one day people from near but also far even farther than Irvine even farther than Corona even farther than South Bay and LA they will travel with all their kids with all their friends to encounter the glory of God's presence here at Echo all because we have not neglected to meeting together and continually ministering to the heart of God and God seeing that loved resting here with us. It is his presence. Lord, give us your presence. Give us yourself. Amen. I'm going to invite Pastor Jeanette to come up for benediction. Mm. It's not your heart burn. Yeah. Mm. Church, let's respond to this invitation to not just come out to church and live life to avoid grieving God, but do, to do so to please God, which is a different thing. What if coming together isn't about production, our preference, but about pleasing God and welcoming and inhabiting the presence of God here for the world to encounter and taste and see that God is real and God is good, that God is sovereign, that God, we can know him in Jesus. So Lord, take our hearts. Oh Lord, may they beat for you again. May we desire to know you, your death and resurrection. May we desire to know what pleases you and to pray for the things that grieve you and delight you. And to be people who know and love your heart, who welcome and embody your presence. So church, I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the delight of the Lord, oh, may it bubble up inside of us. May the pleasure of God fall afresh on us this day. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joanne. Thank you, church. Thank you, peace up there. And I guess let's go and fellowship outside. And if you're going to join us for dinner, we can't wait to fellowship together and join each other for meal. If you've been coming a while too, you can go ask the people who are the bouncers at the at, uh, who, who check you in. If if, if you haven't you don't know about it, you, can we come and join you? Please please give it a try. All right, God bless y'all.